All right, so this video is going to be an introduction to the concept of resonance. Now, I'm not going to cover resonance entirely in this video. In this video, I'm just going to uh, explain some, you know, some of the uh, rules for constructing what we call resonance forms, which I'm also going to define in this video. And then in a later video, I'm going to discuss resonance how it, and how it applies to energy and stability and stuff like that. So for now, uh, consider the Lewis structure for uh, a compound that has the following chemical formula, CH3CO2 minus. This compound has a name, we call it the acetate ion. It's the conjugate base of acetic acid. So if you drew this Lewis, Lewis structure out and you uh, followed all the rules correctly, then you'd end up with a Lewis structure that looks like this. The interesting thing about this Lewis structure is that we have two oxygens that are non-equivalent as shown. Oxygen 1 has is doubly bonded to the carbon and has a formal charge of 0, while oxygen 2 is singly bonded to this carbon and has a formal charge of minus 1. So really the question is, how can you tell which oxygen is which? Why didn't we give the double bond and the zero formal charge to this one and then the single bond and the negative formal charge to this one up here. And the interesting thing about this is if you if you assume that the molecule exists as it's shown here then you would expect the bond strength of this bond here to be different from the bond strength and bond length of this bond here because shorter bonds, uh, excuse me, double bonds are in general shorter and stronger than single bonds. Experimental evidence, however, has shown that both of these bond lengths are equivalent. And the bond length of these two bonds is somewhere between that of a carbon-oxygen single bond and a carbon-oxygen double bond. So really what's going on is there's another contributing structure. This structure doesn't really tell the whole story. And that other contri uh, contributing structure looks like this. Notice now that oxygen 1 is the one with the uh, single bond and the negative charge, while oxygen 2 is now the one that has the zero charge and the double bond. These two structures are what we call resonance structures. And the way that we denote resonance structures is we separate them with a single double-headed arrow. So the single double-headed arrow, what does that mean? That means that it's not necessarily the same thing as equilibrium arrows. Equilibrium arrows look like this. And that's not what's going on with resonance. What's going on with resonance is that the real structure of acetate ion is sort of a hybrid between these two contributing forms. Neither of them is correct in their own right. Okay. So in other words, this oxygen is this oxygen. This oxygen is this oxygen. This hydrogen up here is this hydrogen up here, and so forth. So uh, let's go over some of the rules about resonance forms. Um, to start with, resonance forms differ only in the position of pi and non-bonding electrons. So what are pi electrons? Pi electrons are just electrons that uh, are involved in forming a pi bond. What is a pi bond? Well, if you recall, um, single covalent bonds have one sigma bond, and then double covalent bonds have a sigma bond and a pi bond, and then triple covalent bonds have a sigma bond and two pi bonds. So, and non-bonding just means either a lone pair or a free radical or just any electrons that belong to an atom that aren't being used up for bonding. So in order to have uh, more than one resonance form for a particular compound or ion or, or what have you, there needs to be 
a pi bond, whether it's a double, triple bond, double or triple bond somewhere, and there's got to be non-bonding electrons. So if your molecule has, uh, if your molecule doesn't have both of these things, then there, then there can't really possibly be uh, more than one resonance form for it. Uh, secondly, resonance forms must be legitimate Lewis structures. So what do I mean by that? Well, that just means you can't have a carbon with you know five bonds on it, or, or you know an oxygen with you know seven bonds on it, or, or, or whatever. Uh, a third tip about resonance structures is that, as I've said before, with the acetate ion, resonance forms do not exist. They're 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 fictional. They're not real. The real structure is a hybrid of two or more forms. So the real structure of acetate ion was a hybrid between those two resonance forms. Uh, the last tip about resonance forms is that they need not be equivalent. They often are equivalent, but they don't necessarily have to be. So if we go back to the case of uh, acetate ion, these two resonance forms are equivalent. Okay. But uh, why don't we look at uh, at an example of uh, non-equivalent resonance forms. So here I have, uh, this is the Lewis structure for the, con uh, the conjugate base of acetone. It's basically just uh, acetone uh, minus uh, proton. And notice we have two non-equivalent resonance forms here. We have one resonance form that has a lone pair and a negative charge on a carbon, and then a car and then a uh, a carbonyl group, a C double bond O group, and then in the other resonance forms we have a carbon carbon double bond, and then a carbon oxygen single bond, and then that oxygen has the formal negative charge. So when resonance forms are not equivalent, uh, usually they don't contribute equally. So in other words the true structure of the conjugate base of acetone may be more like one of the resonance forms than the other. I would expect, uh, in this particular case, I would expect uh, the resonance form here on the right to be a large contributor. And the reason why is because um, there's a negative charge on the oxygen rather than carbon. And since, uh, since oxygen is a more electronegative element, um, basically in, in, in this resonance form, uh, the negative charge is placed on an atom that is better equipped to accommodate it. So uh, that's just uh, an example of two non-equivalent uh, resonance forms. Notice that in both cases, in both the case of acetate ion and uh, the case of um, the conjugate base of acetone, I can't really get them both on the same screen, but if we revisit the acetate ion, notice that we have a double bond, we have a pi bond, and then one atom away from that we have a negative charge. Same thing with the conjugate base of acetone. We got this double bond here and then one, one atom away from that we have a negative charge. Could also be a positive charge. Um, that's not always a criterion for uh, the existence of two or more resonance forms. There may be two or more resonance forms for something that doesn't have you know the double bond and then the adjacent charge but uh, it's definitely got to have pi electrons in it somewhere. So uh, in, a later, in, in the next video, I'm going to uh, you know, sort of discuss resonance a little bit further and um, elaborate on it a little bit more. So uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, have a good one.